Fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to this Open CTD Quick Start tutorial episode. The idea of this episode is to get you going and get you started in Open TTD, so you should get stuck in and have a go and have a play. If you need to know any more or have any trouble, I suggest you check out my full tutorial series, and the link for that is in the description of this video. So what do you need to do? Well, first you need to go onto the OpenTTD.org website, download it if you haven't already done so. Then install the download, and you will launch the game and be brought to this screen. One thing that many, many people like to do is put a graphics pack on before they get started. So you can go into check online content and you can see there are loads of things that you can download and play around with. Mods, scripts and graphics. Now what I like to do is go for this base graphics set, the Z base. So what you can actually do is filter it by putting ZB and then just click the box that will be here. I've already got it installed. Click that and then click download. It will download and then install itself. To select it, you need to go into your game options and choose which graphic set you're going to do. So then you select from the open one, which you may have automatically installed, to the Z base one. And when you click out of game options, the game will reset. And there we go. We have some better, crisper, cleaner graphics. It's probably one of the better things to do. So let's start a new game. To do that, we click New Game, and the world generation options are in front of us. There are lots of settings that you can play around with and tweak and change, but by default, the default settings are pretty good, especially for getting going, so we won't cover them right now. You have four main different land types to choose from, and the options probably best just to go for the temperate one to start off with and choose a map size. If you're playing by yourself, 512 by 512 is probably good for a good few hours gameplay at least. Uh, if you want to play all the way to the end game, that's 2051 in terms of years, then you will probably need to get something around the 1024 size. It gives you much more space to build around. You can go up to 4000, but that can be ridiculous and is really for large multiplayer games. For starting dates, you can start anywhere around, I think it's 1926, I think is one of the earliest start dates. Um, but I would highly recommend starting in about 1950 or 1975. Starting in 1950 is just before Diesel comes out, so you get to play around with Steam for a little while. We're going to start in 75 so we get a better spread of vehicles. Then you can play around with the hand, uh, the light, uh, sorry, the land and height settings. Uh, we can say that you want the terrain type to be ta uh, to be flat, sea level. We'll have it low. Number of industries. Usually people have this on normal or high. Smoothness tends to be very smooth or smooth. It makes the game a little bit. If you want to make it easier, go for very flat. Go for very smooth, and that will make a nice flat hillsides because it it, it can be quite difficult sometimes. And that's it, just click generate. And here we are, the world is generating, and there we go, the world is in. So my graphics and then uh, my window might look a little bit different to yours. If I go to the cog up here and go to game options, you can see I'm using interface double size. When you start the game, it will be normal, and this is probably what yours will look like. This is fine for playing on a full HD screen, and it is brilliant to work with. You can get lots of things up on your screen all at the same time. However, um, if you're recording like me, I like to put it on interface size double, because if people are viewing on mobile devices or small screens, it makes it a lot easier for them to see what I'm doing when I'm doing the tutorial. Here's our world. You can zoom in and out with a mouse wheel or use these plus and minus options on the screen and you can right click and hold to move around. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move around and hold shift to move around even faster with the arrow keys. You can see this world is actually quite big and will last me probably for an entire game all the way from the start to the finish. What you need to do is check your money. You've got money down here in the bottom right. We've got 100,000 at the moment. Building stuff does cost quite a lot sometimes, so you might want to go into the money options here, this kind of dollar bill and coin thing, and have a look at your finances. In there, you can build some, borrow some loan. You can click the button to, multiple times to borrow more and more, or hold control and click it once to borrow everything. So there we go. You've got some money. What are you going to do with your money? You're going to build your transport empire. So there's a few different ways you can go about it. We're going to just throw a quick bit down of various different things. Let's just find a big city. There's a big city. That's quite nice. Grunham. 
we're going to go up to the options here now. Uh, we've got various different things that you, we're going to look at throughout the course of the episode, but we're going to throw down some things first. These four options here are your vehicle options, your trains, buses, ships, and planes. It will tell you all about the ones you already have. We don't have any yet, so we'll get to that again a little later. But on the other side of the plus and minus, you've got your railway construction, your road construction, your water construction, and your air construction. We're going to start with airports because airports are nice and easy. You click uh, the airport symbol, choose the type of airport you want to plop down. In our case, I'm going to do that one. And you can see we've got a purpley area and a white area. The white area is where your station is going to be. The purple area is the catchment of that station. So the more buildings and stuff you get in that purple area, the better. So we're going to put this as close to the town as we can. There we are, built it in. That cost us 17 grand. Now, of course, we can't just go from one airport to nowhere. We have to go somewhere else. So we're going to find another large town quite close by with some flat land. Yeah, that'll do. And we're going to put one in. Might... Oh, there's a little townhouse there. You can't put it over the top of buildings. And there we go. We've got another airport. So we've got two airports. We can click on the hangar, new aircraft. And we can choose an aircraft in the list here. Build, build and buy the aircraft. And that is it. We've got an aircraft now to go between two airports, but we have to tell it where to go. So we're going to click on the orders, click go to, I'm going to click one airport, click go to, and click on the other airport. And then that's it. It knows what trip it wants to do. And when it gets to the end of the orders, it will go back to the top and repeat its orders. So we clicked on the stop button here, and that will go. So now we've got an aircraft apparently traveling around 200 kilometers along the ground. That can't be right. 200 kilometers an hour around the airport. No good at all. Now, when you first put a station or airport in, if you click on it, you can see that it's uh, there's no information in this main middle box about passengers that are waiting. And that's because a station doesn't have anything waiting at it until a service is registered. And you don't have a service registered until an aircraft or a vehicle first visits it. I'm going to hold tab to fast forward the game now. In single player, you can do this. You can't do that in multiplayer. I'm going to wait for our aircraft to land. As it lands and goes to the airport, you can now see that passengers are starting to wait at the airport. And this is now because the service is registered. If we click on the aircraft and look on this information button here, you can see that the capacity is 90 passengers and 10 mail. So this aircraft has passengers and mail. We've got passengers and mail waiting now. You can see there's nothing on the aircraft at the moment, and that's because it's just registered its service at both airports. There's now loads of people waiting at this airport, and when it lands, it will go and fill it with people. And you can see now, if we click on the aircraft and on the information, that there's 90 passengers and 10 mail bags from Temple Airport. Again, I'm going to fast forward it for tutorial purposes. I'm going to wait for the aircraft to land on the other side. Here it comes. There we go. Aircraft's in, and it's unloading, and we get some money. We got four grand for that trip. Not bad, not bad at all. So aircrafts are nice and easy. You can just plonk your airports down and give it some orders. What's not so easy? Well, we'll go to roads. Road construction can be a little bit more challenging, because you actually have to put a route in. So similar to airports, you can get a bus depot one place, and you can put a bus depot in another place. But you can't just then get a, uh, magically have a bus. You have to have a bus depot. Okay, so a little bit different to airports. Airports, the actual hangar acts as the depot. For road vehicles, you have to put one in. So we're going to pop one in here at the end of the road. Now, we need the road building options like this. We're going to connect up the road so that our bus can come out. Click on the depot, new vehicle, and we're going to choose a bus. And we're going to give it some orders. We're going to tell it to go from here to here. From one bus depot to the other. Now, up to now, this has been pretty similar to the airports. The only problem is now is that our bus has no way from getting from one town to the other. It can't fly like the aircraft. So what we're going to do, we're going to get road pieces here in the road construction and connect up the towns. So we can do this in a multiple number of ways, but I just do that. That's it. Nice and easy done. You can build all sorts of roads across and around if you really want to, um, but just one road will do. There's lots of different options on the roads. You can do one-way roads and all sorts of other things. But for an in-depth tutorial about that, I would suggest you check out my main tutorial series. And that's it. We've now got a bus that goes backwards and forwards between two places. Now, it doesn't have to be two places. You can have it go in a circuit around other places. For example, we can put a depot, uh, bus station in over here and connect up the roads thusly. Let's go like this. Plop. Brilliant. And what we can do now is we can tell this bus to go, instead of going to Pumping Way on Sea, we can tell it to go to Trunning, uh, what is it? Trunfing Pool. So it goes to Duntown, Trunfing Pool, Prunning Way on Sea, and then back to Duntown again. Now at the minute it's already on its way to Prunning Way, so we 
it's on its way to do its orders. But now if we fast forward the game, you can see that it's going to go back to Duntown, and this time it's going to go all the way down to Tunning Pool. There we go. Do its, it's going to do its visit. We're going to get a new, little bit of news at the bottom of the screen, and then back there. It's just going to keep going round and round and round, and it should make us some money. Now, it just broke down. You see it paused there for a moment? That's the reliability of the vehicle. If you look at the information on here, you can see that this vehicle's reliability is 69%. Now, the reliability um, determines how much it will break down, and you don't really want your vehicles to break down that much if you can help it. Vehicles, when you buy them, have a certain amount of reliability. And there's some other information about how, much they, how fast they go, what their running costs are, when you highlight each vehicle. This vehicle we're looking at now has an 84% maximum reliability, and that reliability goes down and down and down as it's moving around and travelling about. What you need to do is get it to visit a depot, and every now and then it will visit a depot um, automatically, but if you need to, you can actually force it to visit a depot and put it into the orders like this, but we don't want it to do that today. So that's planes and buses, they're not too bad. How about water vehicles? Well, that's quite easy too. In fact, it's quite easy indeed. You need to get a dock. Now this is waterways construction up here, and this is the dock. And if you place it on a uh, edge tile, you can place a dock down like that. If you try and do it on land, it won't work. If you try and do it on water, it won't work. It has to be on one of these slanty bits that goes from land to water. So there you've got a dock. Well, we need a dock on the other side. Well, this is a perfect place to go. We're going to put it there. Again, look at the purple catchment area. I'm not going to get the whole town, but this red building is going to be in. The football stadium and these houses are all going to be serviced by this dock. Ships need a place to be bought and sold, so we're going to put a couple of um, hangers in. You can put more in if you like. I mean, it's pretty pointless, but you can do. And then we click on it. We're going to buy a ship. We're going to buy a passenger ferry. or No, we'll buy a hovercraft. There we go. Buy a hovercraft. We're going to tell it to go from one place to the other. It's pretty simple, similar to the aircraft and the buses, and away it goes. We can now see that our ship is coming out of here, and it's going to go from dock to dock. There it goes to one dock, registering its service, hovercrafting along, cross to the other dock, register its service there. Now it's going to pick up passengers for the, for the first time. Now there is a different option about this, you can set vehicles to do different sort of loadings. You can full load, transfer, unload only, you can pick up, you can delete, you can pick up, wait until you're full on all different cargo types, you can wait until you're full on one cargo type, and all those options and how to do them are covered in my main tutorial series. But you can play around with those options if you like. And there we go, we've got a functioning ship. Now to probably the hardest, but yet the most fun and most interesting ones, trains. What we're going to do, we're going to go to Railway Construction, and we're going to put a train station in. We click Train Station, and we've got to choose a number of tracks and platform length. Your platform length will depend on how long your trains are. Do not build trains that are longer than your platform lengths. It takes ages for them to kind of fill up and, uh, and to do. So we're going to choose a one-track five length platform we're going to just stick it there on the end of this town there we are temple woods train station has now been entered now let's find someone let's let's do a train line over to cutbourne okay let's put that here and let's put that ooh, down there there we go now again our trains can't magically go from um station to station they need some track and there is a few different ways of doing this you can use these track tools here to place pieces of track, and I'm just going to make the trees invisible to, invisible to make this easier to see. I'm going to press Ctrl and X, that brings up the transparency options, and I'm going to click trees. You can do this for other things as well. You can make buildings transparent, stations, and all sorts. Well, there we go. Now, I've got this tool here, so you can put diagonal pieces in like this. You can put diagonal pieces the other way. You can put straight pieces in that way, like this. Bits of track. You can do it in all different directions. Okay, and you can also use the remove tool, which is this digger, which helps you remove those pieces of track. You can also press D um, in some scenarios, and that will bring up the big bomb tool, which you can also select manually. We can delete those items if we want to. It's a lot quicker than using the uh, remove tool sometimes. Now, sometimes those ones, those individual ones here don't get used by many people because lots of people use this, the auto rail mode. Now, this one is uh, where the piece of rail will snap depending on where you're pointing in the square. So, we're going to point it in this direction. We're going to bring it up here. You can see it automatically builds up that hill, goes across here. That's quite cool. We're trying to get to this piece of a station here. So, we're going to bring the track out that way. We're going to do our diagonal piece there. Is that right? No, it's not right yet. 
let's go to here. Now one thing you need to know is you see that the land slopes down here. You can't build diagonally across a piece of sloping down land. Okay, for sloping land, you have to just go straight down it like that. Okay, and connect it up. Yay, I hit it on, on the nail. And there we go. That is a simple line. We can put a train depot. Now we can either put the train depot on the side. We can put it on the end of the station. You could put it all the way over here if you really wanted to and connect it up with a piece of track. I, don't, I have no idea why you would do that, though. Like this. And we need a train. To get a train, we click on the depot, new vehicles, and we'll choose a steam train, because that's what we've got at the moment. We've also got these diesels, but I like steam trains, so we're going to put a steam train. We're going to put a, put a few carriages in. We're going to make it vehicle length two and a half. Why not? I'm going to tell it to go from this station to this station. Now, there are different ways to get your trains moving. You can look in the trains options here, which we had a quick look at earlier. There's one train. We can click this green button here to start all trains. We can click this green button here to start all trains in this depot. Or we can click the stop button here to start our single train. And here is our train. Where has it gone? Well, we can't see it because we've got too many things on the screen. But that's easily fixed. We can press the delete key on the keyboard, and that just clears your screen. Now, with all the things that you have on the screen, there's this pin button here. If you click the pin button and it'll open other things, when you click the delete key, everything will disappear apart, things that are, apart from things that are pinned. And there we go. We've now got a train going backwards and forwards between the two different points. There we are. In and out. Jobs are good. Enough. Now you can do much more complicated train networks, and to give you an example of how bad it can get, I'm just going to load one for you. This here is an example of an extensive train network. If we have a look down here in the bottom, you can see that we've got some pretty monstrous train stations. Long trains, lots of signals, lots of junctions, and this can be very, very complicated to do. However, you can work it out. And using different signals, you can make fantastically flowing networks with large towns and brilliant networks that move things and make loads of money. You can see I actually have 2.2 billion pounds in this particular game right now. Uh, let's have a look. You can also see that the trains look different. These aren't steam trains. We've got monorail. Uh, these ones are monorail trains down here, like train 178. And these ones are maglev, just like train 204. You can see they're making a lot of money for me as well. So networks, train networks can get very complicated and very extensive. But if you want to know more about how to do the signals, how to do the junctions and all that sort of thing, you can check out my main tutorials. And again, like I said, the link for that is in the description. So I've covered the main sorts of building options. The other building option here is the land. You can play around with the land by raising it up like this. Like that. Or by lowering it like this. Or you can use the equalize tool, which just levels out the land. It's a very nice tool, that. You can also add trees, which is always quite good. And if a local authority don't like you because their opinion of you changes, well, they, they think I'm good, but if I wanted to be really good with them, I could go around and plant loads of trees. There's different ways of making them like you and not like you. Um, and there's actually a list for that, a full list on the wiki. But there you go. Trees around there often makes things better. So you can move land, move trees, uh, you can check out your vehicles by looking at these different options here. You can see that I have a large number of vehicles in the list. I don't have any aeroplanes, didn't bother with any aeroplanes. I don't have any ships, didn't bother with ships, but you can see I've got lots of trains here and you can organize them by uh, sort by number, but I like to sort by profit this year or profit last year. And if you sort by that, you can see that one of my trains here made 2.3 million pounds last year fantastic right let's have a quick look at some of the last options so uh, one of the things up here this is your company information this is probably one of the things you first want to look at because you can check select your color scheme your manager name and your company name but you can do that at any time uh, what else can we do uh, what we got here graphs graphs are sometimes good it shows your operating profit you can look at income graphs performance history uh, cargo cargo payment rates is a good one because it tells you what cargo is worth the most when you transport it the next one along here that we've looked at already is the monies it shows you your current year and your past two years along with your totals if you want to have a closer look at this on your screen at all times you can use this little up line uh, button here 
and that will shrink it out and keep it on the screen. Or well, the other option is this one here, and it goes to a small mode, so you can see your finances, but you can also see the money in the bottom right there, so I have no idea why you'd do that. Uh, so we've done graphs. Uh, this one here tells you all the industries. Uh, if you want to find out what industries are on the map, it gives you a list of them. You can also uh, order them by production, which is a nice place to find out places that are producing loads of stuff. For example, where's it gone? Yes, I think this... Uh, Food processing plant is doing 3,424 tons of food. Now, in addition to passengers that we looked at previously, you can also do um, all these industries. So this one here, this food processing plant, this is actually in a mod, so it's not a standard industry. Let me see if I can find a standard industry. Uh, a farm. There we are. We've got a farm. Uh, that is a standard... Uh, oh, no, hang on. No, it's not a mod, sorry. It's... Um, it's a standard industry in this environment. You can see we're not in a standard one. We're in an Arctic environment right now. So, yeah, you can click on an industry to find out more about it. Uh, it tells you how much it's produ producing. You can click display chain, and this tells you what commodities go from what place to what place. So you can see a farm sends wheat and livestock to a food processing plant. If we click on that, you can see a food processing plant makes food, which goes to houses. So if you're not sure about what to send where, that display chain is a good way of doing it. And you can see that here we've got some vehicles. This particular train here, it's got some livestock trucks and some wheat trucks, and it's transporting all that livestock and wheat along this line, changing it over at Louth Farm, and then it's bringing it all the way around here, I think, to, yes, this food, uh, sorry, this food processing plant just over here, which is producing 2,000 and odd tons of uh, food. So that's industries. That's industries in a nutshell. You can transport the commodities about. And the commodities for industries can be very lucrative. In, for example, transporting goods is uh, very highly paid. Coal's quite highly paid. And so is gold and food. They're all quite highly paid in the standard game. The last few things to look at is you've got a stations list here. This is a good way to check out what stations you have. Um, you can also see what is waiting at those stations. And it's sometimes a good idea to do total waiting cargo and sort by it. That way you can see which stations are overloaded with goods. For example, this particular farm here, I'm not shifting enough stuff. It's just stacking up, so I might need to put more trains in. This next one is the subsidies one. People don't bother us with subsidies very often, but if you complete a subsidy, then you get an extra bonus of money for usually the first year. This one here is the towns directory. Really good for finding towns that have large populations to work with, so you can sort by population. And you can see Louth is probably one of is 20,000 people. It's a very big town, as you can see there. You can sort it all out. Uh, and you, you know that if you find big towns, you're going to get really good coverage and transport lots of passengers. And the last option up here is the world map. The world map has lots of different filters and features. You can see here and, uh, the network out on the world map. If you click, click the industry button, it shows up all the different industries. You can see them flashing on the screen now as I hover over them all in the left-hand corner. Uh, you can see where all your track is, you can see the land height. Uh, this one I like here is the vehicles one, it shows you all your vehicles, so you can see all the little red trains snaking along the black track along the screen. You can see there are huge amounts of them moving around all the time. And that is pretty much it. Up here on the top right hand corner you've got your information and helps and toggle stuff. And uh, then you've got your game options and settings, which we're not going to go into now. If you know, want, to, want to know more about the settings, then check out uh, my main tutorial. And here is where you save your game, load your game, and abandon your game. You can pause your game, and you can fast forward the game as well. Pausing the game can also be done with by F1, and there are loads of keyboard shortcuts. For example, if you press A, it brings up the auto tool from railway construction. If you press B, it brings up bridges if you've got um, railway construction already open. There you are, there's a bridge pin put in there. If you press D, it bring, brings the delete tool up. T for tunnels, I could put a big tunnel in there, it cost me loads of money. There's the A for the auto tool. S for signals, for things like that. You've got lots of different key combinations you can use. Also, the F keys across the top here bring up various different things. You can see them all popping up on the screen now. Money, logistics. If you hold shift and go across the F keys again, it brings up your vehicles, as you can see in the top left. And it can also zoom in and zoom out. Uh, bring up your different construction options like F7's railway, f eight road construction, F9 is waterways. Uh, you can pretty much do the whole game without the mouse of, um, in terms of selecting options, but you can't uh, do it all 
Um, you can't do it all. You can't build in the middle of the screen without the mouse. Really, that is, that's not really going to happen. You you, you need the mouse to be able to build. Well, it's been about 25 minutes now, and I have given you a quick whistle stop tutorial on OpenTTD. You should know how to get the game, install it, get there and get in and play around with it, and know all the basics of how to do it. If you want to know more, like I said, I keep saying it, check out my main tutorial series. There is a playlist, and people say it's really good. So, maybe it is good. Um, I'd like to think so. Well, that's going to be all for now. I hope this quick start tutorial has been useful for you. If it has been useful, please give it a like. If you've got any uh, thoughts, ideas, or questions, pop them down in the comments below. I've been Master Hellish. This has been my very quick start tutorial for OpenTTD. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.